Hello, my name is Henry Washburn. I'm going to be showing you how do we use the Virtualize by ESX Restore option to uh, start a virtualization through your ESX environment. On the right hand side I have my data device and on the left hand side I have my VMware infrastructure cluster. Uh, let me go ahead and show you how to do this. Uh, right now my uh, agent training 87 is off and you see it just populated an error. I'm going to go and restore click on the 87 agent, and virtualize via ESX. Now you virtualize via the latest recovery point that you have, usually, and you can choose uh, different options, uh, different ways to virtualize. I'm going to choose the cluster option. And keep. I can keep everything the same, uh, Logic SAS, VM network. Uh, we're going to do it live on the network since I'm in a disaster recovery. And click Start VM. And once this uh, updates, uh, since I'm using the web app on the left-hand side, I probably need to refresh every once in a while. Otherwise, it'll, uh, it won't display until uh, I go and try to use it. So let me go ahead and refresh. You can see that it's booting on the right-hand side. This is displaying the same information that you would see in the uh, VMware vSphere web app. You can see that it's powering on the virtual machine. I'm going to go to the virtualization. Since this is an OEM virtualization, it's going to show some activation issues, but that's okay since we're just doing this as a demonstration. And since this is set to DHCP, it's going to not have the correct IP address, which is .87, which we can go ahead and edit as well. It's got internet, which is good. You can just verify what currently it has for an IP address. And it's 1.219, which is a DHCP IP. I'm going to go ahead and change that to statically assigned. One point eighty seven. And this subnet is actually a 252. And we can validate those settings. I'm going to remove any other adapters that are unneeded. Close and double check. It'll verify. We've got still connectivity. We see that there's connectivity. Now the crucial bit is backing up that live uh, virtualization. So there's, and if there's any issues or anything like that, let's go ahead and start a backup, and it'll verify connectivity. Running the pre-flight operations, it does that uh, to make sure, and it attempts to start the backup. And you see, it runs very speedily onto the uh, data device. This is backing up directly in line. Since we use uh, inverse chain technology, we don't have to have a new chain for uh, a, a new uh, recovery point. It's going to hash through the changes on the production machine, which is now in a disaster recovery mode. Once that's complete, well, sh you can just do a storage vMotion. Technically, you don't need to run a uh, backup at all. In fact, if you want to go right into a storage vMotion, you can. I'm going to cancel the backup. And just go to migrate, and we can leave it on the same host. But we can, uh, we, well, we can change both host and data store. But if you're running on the correct host that you want to use, you can just click change data store, because all you really need to do is a storage vMotion. We'll move it to uh, Blade One, uh, Server One, Blade Two, Data Store One. Actually, let's double check. It's already it's only got provisioned right now, uh, 1.06 gigs. So that means we have enough space, and we're gonna set the same format and finish while this is running. You usually don't want to run a backup at the same time. You can, but it's not necessarily the best option to do so. Because there's a lot of IOP, IOPS that are needed to both handle local backup and the storage vMotion. So 
it'll take some time. Once that's complete, you're back to your original state. You can change your template the way you need and continue running as you had been. For more information on how to run anywhere, restore anytime, and protect anything, go to data.com.